Isabella Slack, Miss Berkeley class of 2019, and she will end our program by talking about the transformative power of teaching confidence in schools. I'm 14. I just started high school last month. And I want you to try and guess which words of advice my parents gave me on my first day of ninth grade. OK, I'll give you some hints. It's three words. It sounds like it should be easy. And people tell you these things when you're, say, going on a first date or giving a TEDx talk, as the case may be. My parents' advice to me was just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. But it took a while for me to actually come out here for this talk and just be myself. For a while when I was practicing, I would start to sound like my old swim coach. <laughs> or I would sound like I was giving a speech. Or I would sound like I was really tired and I'd drag my feet. Or I would try like too hard to sound natural and then I'd start moving my hands a lot and saying like a lot even though I don't in like real life. But anyway, back to just being yourself. I started thinking, you hear that phrase all the time, but what does it really mean to just be yourself? Because that phrase sounds like just being yourself is easy. I really thought about it, and truly, just being yourself means be authentic, be real. Have trust that whatever comes your way, you can handle it. Just being yourself means being confident. And while some people may try to mask their insecurities with arrogance and bravado, that's not real confidence. So, why are some people confident while others are not, regardless of educational opportunities and financial resources? Are confident people doing something differently? Can confidence be learned? And if so, is it something that could be taught in school? In the last year, I discovered a lasting way to learn confidence, and what I've found has changed my approach to life and transformed the way I interact with people. I was surprised when I looked up some synonyms for the word confidence, and I found the word phlegm. <laughs> Apparently, it's not just the stuff you cough up into a napkin when you're sick. Phlegm's other meaning is calmness of temperament. So if you have phlegm, the good kind, you can keep your head in stressful situations. You're confident. So do you have to be born that way? Or can confidence be learned? As it turns out, yes, confidence can be learned. And it appears to be one of the most powerful qualities you can have. In the last year, I discovered a lasting way to learn confidence. And to understand it, I want you to think back to when you were the most carefree and confident, when you were little. My carefree and confident phase lasted longer than most until I was about 10 years old. My teacher told my parents that she feared that since I was so enthusiastic, so outgoing, so much myself, that it might be difficult for me to fit in the following year at school. When I found out, I was horrified. And for the first time in my life, I feared judgment. I had to consider, if I say this or do that, what will people think? My parents and teacher wanted me to continue for me to be me, but just dial it back somehow. But how do you know how much to dial it back when you're 10? So, I counted how many questions I answered in class. People may not have even noticed this change. I was still outgoing as I always had been, but I just didn't feel quite the same because I feared being judged. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. And that's the opposite of confidence. Ultimately, I realized that you can reclaim that carefree, confident feeling you had as a kid by playing. In order to have the confidence you did as a child, you need to play like one. I figured this out when I decided to take an improvisational acting class, and something that felt almost magical began to happen. Week after week, we would act out silly scenes, making them up as we went along. The magical part was that by doing this consistently, we gradually lost our inhibitions and grew closer to each other. In class, I had to come up with ideas so quickly, I didn't have time to consider whether they were good or not, which helped me to feel more decisive. The class became a safe place where we could just be ourselves. At school, without even realizing it, I was more fearless. I was more outgoing during class discussions, and when I talked with teachers, parents, boys. In that person you talk with on the phone when you order takeout food? So I began thinking, 
wouldn't it be great if you could learn confidence in school? But how would that work? What I figured out is that you don't have to take an improv acting class to learn confidence. All you have to do is apply improv's three simple rules. Now, I know you're thinking, ew, rules, boring, no, but these are fun rules, I promise. So let's start with rule number one, yes and. Yes and is the opposite of when no is the first thing out of your mouth. With yes and, you both accept and add on to someone else's ideas. So if someone were to say, let's put mustard on this cheesecake, and the idea totally grosses you out, a yes and response might be, yes, that sounds strange, and yet I'm willing to try it. Maybe we could add sprinkles. When you say yes and, you make the person you're talking with feel validated, which creates confidence. And when you add on to each other's ideas, you both create something that neither of you could have done alone. But yes and only works if you apply rule number two. Listen. This means pay 100% of your attention to the person you're talking with. Even notice changes in the emotion in their voice or their body language. When you listen, your responses will be a lot better, which will help the people that you're talking with feel validated. So say yes and, listen, and follow rule number three, take risks. You're going to make mistakes and fail, but the ability to keep calm and carry on is what confidence is all about. So say, for example, you broke your mom's crystal vase and she's going to be really mad. Simply accept what is, deal with the consequences, and move forward. Confident people listen to their gut and know that everything will work out in the end, even if their moms take away their iPhones. So say yes and, listen and take risks. Some of the most confident leaders and trailblazers the world has ever known, including Abraham Lincoln and the Wright brothers, operated according to these rules. So how did the Wright brothers become the first to fly? Well, before the Wright brothers created their first ever flying machine, these brothers functioned like a well-oiled improv machine. Wilbur had phlegm, the good kind. He was confident and steady. Orville, on the other hand, was energetic and loved technology. These two were underdogs, and if you had money back then, you might not have considered them a good investment. But they had faith that they would always succeed in the end, even if they weren't always quite sure how. And though they often disagreed, they listened to each other's ideas, which was a dynamic that ultimately led to their success. Neither could have done it without the other. It was by listening, saying yes and, and taking risks that these brothers had confidence. So I wondered, if these rules were able to help the Wright brothers create an airplane, what could they do for schoolwork? An important group project gave me the chance to find out. Now you should know that in the past, I have hated group projects. In fact, I got an A on my English paper entitled, Group Grades, a Travesty to Students. My favorite post is this one from Tumblr that says, when I die, I want the people I've worked with on group projects to lower me into my grave so they can let me down one last time. <laughs> I was determined, though, that my experience on this next group project would be different. So when my science teacher announced the paper box project, I was excited to have an opportunity to use the rules of improv in a group situation. For the paper box project, each group has to send a ball down a path until it rings a bell. It's kind of like creating your own version of the game Mousetrap. After I was assigned team leader, I focused on listening to and saying yes and to my other group members' ideas. And I also tried my best to make sure that everyone was assigned a job that they felt comfortable doing. Overall, things went really smoothly, and it turned out to be one of the best group project experiences I've ever had. Now, when the project was over, I wanted to see how my other classmates experienced the project. So I administered a survey. Now, what's interesting is that nearly half of all students surveyed found that their ideas were instantly rejected by their teammates. No one really listened or said yes and to those ideas. We'll never know what innovations those ideas might have produced. So why not teach confidence in schools? Why not create generations of students who are better able to do interviews, get jobs, work well with others, and form stronger, happier relationships? Confidence is just as important as academics, and arguably even more so which is why everyone benefits when schools use these rules in their curriculums. If you want to join an improv class, that's great. But even if you don't, you can start using these rules as soon as you leave here today. When you leave here, try really listening to someone's ideas. Remember that mistakes can lead to opportunity. Say yes and, and see where that takes you 
on your journey of confidence and success. Thank you.